Hello everybody and welcome back to Coombe Valley Campers. Today we're on the 2K T5 and we're going to be doing some much needed improvements on the dash and the doors with Heritage Park Centre to keep your T5 alive. Just want to say thank you to A-Plan Modified Van Insurance for sponsoring this series of Coombe Valley Campers. We actually have the 2K T5 insured with A-Plan Modified Van Insurance because they will insure your vehicle from the moment you buy it until you convert it to a camper van and beyond. And if you would like a special rate for your next policy, mention Coombe Valley Campers at the time you're asking for a quote and they will sort you out. As you may have seen from previous videos, this cab in particular was absolutely disgusting. So what we've done so far is tear the entire thing out. I mean, dash panels, floor, seats, everything came out and we got in there, scrubbed everything down, we've used steam cleaners and we've even improved the headliner by lining it in some four-way stretch carpet. But today we're gonna to be doing some small improvements that just make your life a little bit easier, such as the winders for the handle and also a protector or a trim that goes down the front of the dash to help you not lose your pencils receipts and parking tickets ever again so today is all about the cab improvements you've seen we've cleaned it we've got it back up to snuff and it looks so much better in there but we've got some little jobs just to make sure it's perfect for daily use and we'll help you use everything a little bit easier in there the first of which is this trim now you may remember back in the cleaning video of the dash and the cab that we removed, I don't know, maybe a dozen pencils, a spanner, carabiner, about three quid a change and a host of parking tickets and things like that. Well, we're gonna show you how to eradicate that annoying little thing by just installing this very simple trim at the front of your cab. Then we're gonna move on to the doors. Now, people have asked me a lot in the past how to remove the doors and the inner door cards and everything else from a T5, and we're gonna use that today to do a bunch of jobs. First of all is to replace the door clips. Now, these door clips on a T5, T6 are notorious for breaking, and they're an absolute sod to take off as well. So we're gonna remove those bits and pieces. The door lock, ever since we replaced the keys and got the central locking working on the van, we found out that the actual solenoid in the door lock doesn't work. Now, this part I actually got from a used parts specialist on eBay, because from the research I've done, a genuine VW part does actually work better. So we'll try it out. You know, this was about 60 pounds on eBay, delivered, and it's a genuine VW part, and hopefully that sorts out the problem with the central locking. At the same time, we'll show you how to replace this cable. These break quite often on a T5, T6, and it's the cable that goes between the door handle and the lock itself, or sorry, the inner door handle. And then lastly, which is a thing that I didn't realize when I bought the van, is the little plunger for the handbrake. Now this tells you on the dash that your handbrake's on or off. Um, ours was missing. It's got the cable under there, but it was missing. So nice, simple job. We're gonna do that today. I just wanna say a huge thanks to Heritage Parts Center who have come on board as a collaborator with the 2K T5. They're gonna be helping us out with a host of parts, which I cannot wait to show you. But for today, they've got all of these bits that I've just shown you. And what we are doing also is helping you guys out with a promo code. If you've seen the bits in the video today and you want to purchase them, go straight onto the Heritage Parts website, enter in Coombe Valley 10, and you will get a 10% discount on anything in your shopping cart. Those of you with a T4 or T5 with winder handles, know that they can break. And the part that breaks is this little part in here. And it's the locking ring to ensure that your handles stay on the van. What I'm gonna show you now is how to replace it with a shiny new one. So the first thing you're gonna do is put your locking ring on, making sure that this tab here is in the position that you want your handle to be. Because this little nipple here sits in that part of the handle right there. So I'm gonna put the locking ring on, push it in, put the handle on, pushing that in as well. That will slot in here like so. I'm gonna line up my two positions and then I'm simply gonna push the locking ring up. There we go, locking rings on, handles in position. Took a little bit of fiddling around, but 
Now I've got a new handle. Whoa. I think these mechanisms need a bit of grease. There we go. Nice and simple sheet mod. This is in the upright position. Nice easy fix and it won't rub on my leg. So there we go. If you want to buy that part, look at Heritage Part Centre. And if you use the code Coombe Valley 10 you get 10% off. Now here's a five minute mod that will help you in your T5 slash T6 forevermore. If you own a T5 or T6, you know that you could lose things down the front of the dash. And we lost a bunch of stuff down here when we were cleaning. Or when we were cleaning, we found out that somebody in the past had lost a bunch of stuff. And then when we replaced the windscreen, we found a load more. And we have this dash trim piece that will stop things falling down the front of your dashboard. And like I say, five minute mod. It's a case of popping it down the front, trimming it to fit, and then that's it. It doesn't need adhesive on, it doesn't need fixing, it just sits down in the dash there. All you're gonna need is your trim, a piece of scrap wood for cutting, and a Stanley. First thing then, I'm gonna lay this trim angled side down into the front of the dash. I'm just gonna tuck it in there and it sits really nicely along the front of the dash against the window. I can see that it's a touch long, so I'm just gonna keep trimming bits off so that it fits nicely against the dash. So I've got my cutting board, just gonna make a slice Still a bit too long. And there we go. I've cut, what, an inch off of that? Just over an inch. And now let's use this pen as an example. I don't lose anything down there anymore. It's not rolling. The furthest it will go is those vents but it's not going to go further down the dash. So there we go. Nice, easy way of tidying up the front of the dash. It means you won't lose anything down there again. Thanks again for Heritage Parts for supplying the trim piece. And if you want the same, make sure to use Coombe Valley 10 at the time of checkout. You'll get a 10% discount. The keys for this vehicle in particular were definitely 200,000 miles old. They were knackered, the batteries had gone, but luckily I had both of them. What we have now are two brand new keys and we've got to thank Richard from Brighton Car Keys who came down to sort these keys and a few keys from the guys in the workshop as well. So thank you very much to Richard. In fact, we've done another video on his whole process back on Project Lockdown, the T4. But what we found out once we got a new key and a new battery is is that this door doesn't open or close with the central locking. And after doing a bit of research, it's the actual door locking and solenoid mechanism within the door that has gone. So that's why we've bought the good VW secondhand part. And today we're gonna hopefully get that little pin opening and closing with the central locking button. Let's get straight on with it. The T5 door card then is actually quite easy to remove. You've just got to locate the fastenings, undo them, and then pop the whole door card off. What you've got is a couple of fastenings under here. I'll show you how to remove that trim in the middle in a minute. We've got one fastening in that hole. This one's actually missing, so we'll find something to put back in there. And then you've got to remove the door handle. Now this door handle is broken, which is why I've got the others, and we'll show you how to replace them later. But yeah, it's a case of removing the screws under here, the fastening in here, and then popping the whole lot off, and you require a trim tool to do that. Um, once the poppers are off, you lift the door up and over the locking pin here. And then once that's off, you've got to unhook the cable that runs from this door handle up to the lock. But again, we'll show you how to do that now. So the first thing to remove is this cover on the door handle, and you should just be able to push it up. It can be a bit stubborn. There we go. Gosh, you can see how grim it is under there. And then it fastens in. We've actually got one snap tab there but it just sort of slides down. So no pulling it out actually just pops off, off. It pops up and off. And then we've got two large Phillips headed screws in there. So I'll just get them undone now. Next stage then is to release the poppers all the way around the door. Or if you've got it, there's the fastening just in here. They can be stubborn, they can break. So be warned, you might want to buy some in advance. But basically what you need to do is get a trim tool behind here. 
and then try and just pop the clips off. I'm going to try and do this whilst you can still see it with the camera. There we go. So that looks like it's only holding in by one, but once that whole door panel is released, then you need to grab it and slide it up. It's held in against that glass. So if we slide it up, there we go. And you've got to concentrate on releasing it from this pin here. There we go. Clips are falling out and you can just see how grim it is under this door. What you might be left with is some cabling. And then if you take a look just in here, this is where this cable is attached. You lift a small tab and then unhook the cable from the handle and that's released. In order to remove this door card then, there's a stage you have to go through before removing the fastenings around the edge. And that is to effectively disconnect the glass from the winding mechanism because the winding mechanism of the door is all in this panel here. It's not connected to this part of the door. So the first thing you have to do, in fact, the first thing you're gonna to have to do before you wind down the window is actually pop off these two access covers here. One and two. And then you need to wind your window down using the electric winder or manual like this one. And then what you'll see appear once you've wound down the window about four or five inches is two 10 millimeter bolts here and you have to undo them, not all the way, but they are holding in clamps that clamp onto this piece of glass. So what we'll do is just undo them to a point that the glass will become free. Then we wind the window all the way back up and then hold it up there with some tape. And then we can wind that motor all the way down. Okay, so 10 millimeter socket. And we're just undoing them, just a couple of turns. And then what should happen now is that that glass, yeah, that glass is now free from those clamps. So I'm gonna use the mechanism, put the glass all the way up to the top, use masking tape, and then we'll tape this piece of glass up into the frame. Do clean your glass inside and out, which I've already done, and then the tape will hold on to it because you don't want that slamming down halfway through you working on it. Once the glass is fastened up there, wind the handles as if you're winding the window back down. And I've pulled it just down to where I can see it again. Now we undo all of these nuts. You can see that someone's already been in here and they've done this wonderful mod with some speakers. We'll go and get some speaker pods later down the line to replace those. But the last thing you've got to be aware of is that some of these wires may need to be disconnected from this whole door panel. Now you can disconnect the entire loom, thread it through the door, and then remove this entirely. But for what we're doing today, we don't necessarily need to do that. What will need to be done is maybe just unclipping a few of them to give them, to give us a bit of movement with, it, with this panel. And then we've just got to loosen this rubber grommet and sleeve here. So when we pull the door handle down, sorry, the door panel down, this will feed back into there and come down this cable. So what we'll do is undo all of those 10 now, keep them safe, put them to one side, and this panel should come off. So we're gonna pull the door, door card off now, but again, you've gotta be careful that all of these parts sort of thread through. Might take a couple of minutes, but we want effectively this piece to just lay on the floor out of our way. So the part we want to access is right up in here. There's already bits broken and coming off. Um, the door lock is actually right in here. Now we have access to all the parts. There is a plug which connects onto the solenoid. So it's the electric communication that goes up to the door lock to tell it to undo and do up. But before we remove this lock, 
there are some parts we have to undo on the side of the door. So let's go and cover that. It's quite difficult to show you in location. So what we're gonna do is just show you how to unpin that plug. And basically you've got a little catch here. So I'm gonna push upwards on the plug, put my thumb in there and undo the clip. So it's a case of just releasing that little catch in there. I'm doing that. What's a good idea now actually, Let's see if it will work for us. It may or may not, don't quite know. But I'm just gonna try the um, lock and unlock now on the key and see if this actually moves at all. The joys of working on older cars or cars that have had a hard life. I've just gone to test the central locking mechanism for the door, plugged it in as you should, press the buttons, nothing works. And I thought initially I bought a dud, so I did. I applied voltage to the pins and on a T5 door module, you apply negative and voltage to pins one or two, or one and two. I can't quite remember now which one's neg and pos, but once I applied voltage to the required pins, the door lock mechanism works. In fact, let's do it now very, very quickly and I'll show you. So I've got my probe tester here. If I, now I'm putting earth on one, Sorry, ground on pin one. Here you go. So ground is on pin one, live is on pin two. Works. So I know that works, that's great. What I'm not getting is voltage out of the plug at pin one or two to activate it. I thought, okay, older T5s are a bit notorious for wiring at the control module which is underneath the seat if you have a fault where your central locking doesn't work at all it's highly likely that moisture has set in underneath the cab mat and actually corroded where two live wires join and it's broken it so look for that but i thought what i'd do is take a look at the control module first and i unplugged it and check it out I'm surprised anything works, to be honest. So they're the plugs that I took out the control module and that's inside the control module. So yeah, I'm surprised anything works because I mean, for a start, check that out. That is just dirt. Now I knew this van was dirty, but that's just next level. So what I'm gonna do, I've got my airline. I've got a multitude of different wire brushes and scrubbing brushes and things like that. I'm gonna take five minutes. Just gonna clean this out, plug it back in. Let's see if the central locking works then, shall we? If not, we're gonna to have to delve a little deeper into this. That's a bit cleaner. But what I'll do now is have a go at the sockets. Plug it back in, see if it works. If not, there's some more cleaning to do. Oh God, it's gonna be grim. Interesting development then. So, underneath the driver's seat is where the control module sits. We've already found that this was covered in gunk. Cleaning those out didn't help. The whole central locking still works, but this one's still the driver's door module wasn't working. So we tested continuity between our blue and yellow cable, which is down here, and the purple cable with a yellow stripe. That wasn't getting any continuity. That was from the plug to this plug here. So what we've done is remove the driver's seat to get to the wiring loom, which is notorious for having problems. I've seen no real problems in the cable. However, I stripped some cable back from this point here to do a continuity test from this point to the plug still no continuity so the problem with the purple with yellow stripe is between this point here up round the loom and into the door and that could be anywhere now if worse comes to worse i can run a brand new cable from this point here to the driver's door not a big deal at all however i do want to find the brake that's not going to happen today because we've only got a limited amount of time to film and we've got some other things to do today anyway but what I have done in the meantime is run a jumper cable from the loom that goes to the door 
Send me the loom here. I've actually found another purple cable, so it works. But now, when I press the button, we have a working solenoid. So it definitely is the purple cable with yellow stripe, which is the issue. So I'm glad we found the problem, and I'm glad the problem isn't with the door lock that's in. So, yeah. <gasps> <laughs> Volkswagens and their problems. Again, 200,000 mile car, and it was filthy dirty. But what I do, what I am happy with is that all of the terminals on the control module cleaned up, and all of the uh, pins cleaned up rather nicely, so that's not a problem at all. We know that works. All we've got to do now is find the break between the purple and yellow. I'll probably do that in my own time, and I will film that, and we'll come back to you once it's all done. Here's hoping. Hi, Lee from the future here. Um, last time you saw us, we were in the van trying to diagnose this lock. It was pretty well described, but basically there was a wire between this door solenoid and the central locking module under the seat, or the body control module underneath the seat, that wasn't playing properly. We thought there was a break in the wire. However, after we'd finished filming, put the van back together, well, to a point. This is how we've been driving the van for the last two weeks, with a bit of wood in, because we didn't want to put it all back together before we'd finished filming. So, put the seat back in, I went to drive home at the end of the day, got home, locked the van, and this lock works now. I'm being completely open with you, I haven't done any trickery in the background, all I've done was put the van back together. So, unbeknownst to me, it might have been a break, it might have been a loose connection under that body control module, you already saw how dirty it was, it might just have been the fact that we may have had a door open, but now it all locks properly and unlocks properly. And this is the original lock. So although I bought a good secondhand unit from eBay, don't need it, which is wonderful. So what we're gonna do now is cover up all of that wiring. I've got some proper cloth tape, the same sort of stuff that I would have used at Volkswagen. Proper cloth electrical tape, gonna cover up all those uh, little connections that we, or the wiring that we sort of expose the innards of. Um, and then put the, put the thing back together. And whilst we're doing that, we're gonna put the new handbrake switch in um, and then put the door back together. So hopefully it should all work out just fine. This is a bit of a, a funny video this time, purely because we've had some time in between, but I've been using the van daily. Uh, I've put my other van, Bully. He's just sort of been semi-retired for the time being, but I've just been wanting to put some miles on this so I can sort of work out the kinks. That being one of them, it worked itself out. Wonderful. Let's terminate or at least cover up those wires, put the van back together and put the door back together, show you the last bits and pieces. When we stripped out the interior of this van, we realized the handbrake didn't actually have a switch, and it's the switch that illuminates on the dash that tells you when your handbrake is on or off. So we reached out to Heritage Parts Center, and they have got us the part, which if you're interested, is part number one Hotel Oscar 947561 slash alpha. And that is basically a little push switch. It's the same for the VW T5, T6, and other Volkswagen models and it's a very, very simple fit, another two minute fix, and it positions itself just here on the handbrake. Now, what you'll notice there are two holes. The first hole, the smaller of the two, is designed to put in the clip. The larger of the two holes is to locate this locating part, I guess, and it's very simple. Make sure your handbrake's down, which this is in this case. We're going to line up the holes making sure the bit that depresses is in here you go and literally there you go clip it in and there we have it that just sits in there and then when you release or when you release your handbrake the plunger comes out and when you close it down or when you yeah so when you engage your handbrake it releases the plunger then you let the handbrake off it makes the contact in the switch and tells you that the handbrake is still in your position. So now that's in, we can bolt the seat in 
plug in the clip or the wiring at the bottom, and that's another job done. Now I'm happy. We've got the seat back together, we've put the handbrake clip in, we've got the central locking sorted, back to putting the door in, and effectively it's the reverse of taking it out. We've taped, taped the windows up. Um, now I can remove my piece of wood that's been holding the window up for two weeks, bolt in this panel. So if you remember right, what we did was, I'll pop these back out the other way, Lower the window down. So once this is bolted in, we lower the window down to match up with these parts of the uh, guides. Glass is down, clamp it together, push the glass back up, and then we can put the door card back on. Do you know what I'm gonna do very, very quickly is, because these are quite old and dry, I think I'm just gonna spray a little bit of white grease on these runners so they run up and down smoothly because it is quite stiff to put this window up and down. Um, and yeah, call cool it good. So I'll go and get a bit of work. Bit of white grease, and we'll sort that out right now. So our aim here is to just get the guides running a bit smoother. I mean, they're pretty, this, it is what it is. But if we can give it a, uh, a helping hand in coming in the window going up and down, awesome. As you can see, there was a little bit of grease on there for factory, but over time it dries out. So I've just got some spray grease. I'm literally just gonna give it a real light coat, and then I'm gonna coat on the uh, actual cables as well not going too crazy and then I'll run the window up and down a couple of times so if you've got electric windows plug it back in and operate the window mechanism in that manner so I'll put the glass all the way up theoretically spray the cables at the bottom wind the window back down and then spraying the cables at the top and then hopefully all of the cables are looped in their guides hopefully that should give you some that's already feeling way better because it was a bit stiff on this window truth be told so what i'm going to do is just hit the backs as well the backs of those guides because they can get dry there as well Run up and down a couple of times. It was always a bit harder getting it up. Now we're lubed up, it's a lot easier. A couple of you might be thinking, but Lee, what about the sound deadening and insulation inside those door panels? There's a reason I'm not doing it today. We're gonna to revisit the doors on another video with some brand new products from Dodomat that will be available from our shop. And they are a new product, especially designed for sound quality. And we're gonna be fitting a new stereo and new speakers and some new door pods in this thing. So if you're a little bit patient with us, we're gonna revisit the doors and the stereo system another day, and we'll do a full rundown on the new products and how to apply them in this door to get the best out of your speakers. As you saw there, I was having a bit of trouble getting the window up and down. First time, I tightened the bracket up, or the clamp up here, wound the window up and down a couple of times, and it was like the window was dislodging. It's because I'd missed the clamp. So, undid it, wound the window up and down, clamped the window again, tried it again, and then it felt like the window was kind of kinked. And basically, again, high mileage car, maybe there's a bit of cable stretch, maybe it's been fitted incorrectly in the past, which has made it all a bit wonk. However, what I did to rectify it was brought the window down to a point that I could adjust it and then loosened off this side, brought the window up 
till it was at the top of the clamp, then clamped it back down again, and now the window goes up evenly. So I reckon there's probably a little bit of inequality between those two clamps, which means when it goes up, maybe the back one's a little bit higher, whatever it might be, it's just going up a little bit wonky. So I've adjusted the glass, so the glass now sits a bit further up this side, towards the front of the door, and now the window goes up and up, up and down dead nicely. You can spray a little bit of silicon grease, a silicon spray, sorry, around the inside of the window felts. I found that happens. Uh, found, I've found that that helps um, as well. But now that window is in and operating correctly, I can put all the bits and pieces back in. I realized that I've forgotten to plug this in to the lock under all of this once again. And then I'll bring you back in a second when uh, I unfuck my fuck up. Right, put your hands up. Who spotted it? Who spotted that I've missed this cable out. And if you did, thanks for telling me, because I've just had to undo it all again and put it back on. Anyway, we are now at a point, once I've popped this in, I'll do that in a second, we're at a point now that we can put the plastic door card back on. And to do that, you have one, two, three, four, five, six screw fittings. In this case, we're missing one of the plastic grommets down the bottom. I'm going to leave that for the time being but we've got one two for the handle and one for the middle two at the bottom and you've got these beautifully designed clips from volkswagen but they're not they are a pain uh they break they're very hard to reset into their position um but volkswagen in their infinite wisdom decided to use them when i took this door card off most were broken so i've headed over to heritage parts and got me some brand new clips. I'll leave a link down below in the description of what part number it is because I don't have it on me right this second. And all they do is simply slot into the numerous points around the door card and then you can pop the door panel back on. Now, what a lot of people, mis uh, a mistake a lot of people make is actually slotting the plastic into the wrong section. And the section you have to slot this clip into is this one right here this front most slot. This slot just holds the springy part and the slot in the center here is where you pop in your clip. And the point of these is, is once you pop your panel into the door, it does that and then opens up this section here like a raw plug in a wall. Now, sadly, they are, what they, what they are designed to do is when you pull on this is they're designed to release, but they never do it properly. So. That's with the door panel on, and that's with it released. I don't know why, but they never really work properly. So I've got me a pack of these. I'm going to fit all of these onto the door. And then the last job to do is to make sure you've got all your connections on the door. And that is this wire, because that is for your little blinker LED light. And then this, and that plugs into here. And then this door release cable, which fits onto the door handle there. I'm not gonna forget it. And if I do, tell me, because I don't wanna do it twice again. So I'm gonna offer the door up. First thing I'm gonna do is ensure that that cable is plugged in. There we go. That probably should be tidied up somewhere around here. Maybe there. That was probably clipped into there somewhere, maybe here at some stage. And then this is the door release cable. That fits into this slot and here as well. So you see that right there? I'm gonna hook this cable in there. That's the bit that does the pulling. Then I'm gonna slot the clip in just there. And there we go. That is all in place. And that should do its thing. We'll clip that cable back up. So putting the door card on is probably a lot harder than taking it off. But if you take your time, you're fine. You've got a few things to locate and a few things to note. So you've got this ridge here, which the top of the door card sits in. So you've got an initial point here. So one line and then second line, first line dips in here nearest the glass, second line dips in there, they lock in. You've got the, the lock pin, that will go through that hole. And then there's a large locating pin down here, 
and that matches up with a hole that's grommeted on the inside of the door. So I'm going to start with this pin. So that's kind of the easiest bit, really. I'm going to push the door cart all the way forward and locate it in there, look. So I'm going to slide the door cart all the way down. Being a bit tricky at the front there. Found another issue with the door. I'd love for this all to go swimmingly. So, what I found is, check it out just here, that piece of plastic's actually bent over. And that's what was stopping the door. And that's probably what's always been wrong with this door. So I'm going to make sure, see that tab was bent back and it wasn't locating properly. So let's, let's reset and try that again, shall we? Because that is not going to go back in. So let's try again. Pin first, locate the trimming. I'm going to actually keep a hold of this. Aha. Who thought a door card would give me so much grief? That is now in there. That bent piece of plastic is now in there. That's obviously what's been misaligning this door, or this door card anyway, for a while. So, that is all in place. At last, holes line up. Holes line up just here. That door pin located. So if you can just see here, those pins that we've just fitted earlier, they're in there, located in the holes, ready to get punched in. All I need to do is give it a swift tap. And I do that all the way around. All the door pins are in. Refit your door. And go and grab a cup of tea. Door works. Let me just shut it and prove it. Lovely. And should we do a real test? We'll close all the doors and just test the central locking because that's the thing that we really needed to do. One second. We are there. Central locking done. Locks. Unlocks. Door opens. Might need a bit of fun in tuning. Lovely. So. Now we know it works, let's put the screws in. Now, half of the screws on this thing were missing. So I've raided my parts bin to find some fitting screws. So that one's in there. And these two are the most important. They're like an M6 cross-headed or Phillips screw. They go in there. It's that one in the center. We've got another large Phillip headed screw that goes in the center pin, threading the needle. Nice. Now, at the beginning of the video, I did say, well, I didn't mention the two at the bottom, or the three, should be three at the bottom. It's because it didn't have them, so I forgot about them. However, we are going to replace the missing ones. And again, rated my parts bin. These, I believe these are actually VW screws. Pop them in. And that on the only make the door card quieter. Doesn't rattle, but more secure too. And I look forward to doing this door again with you because next time this door card's off, we may even be replacing them for some nice posh new versions or some Caravel versions, that's a possibility. But the main reason we'll be taking these door cards off is to fit new stereo equipment and I you know what I'm not a big stereo user but we're going to be doing some miles in this so that will be a really good a really good upgrade now as you saw us do on the other side we've got these brand new winder handles from Heritage Pups that one goes on here I match up the nipple with the top section thread it on push and there we go we have windy windows we have a door that opens and the final bit of trim, whoops, final bit of trim is this one here, which kind of slots into place. There we go, that's in. 
that's a strong handle there and there we have it we've greased the window winder channels we investigated the lock on the central locking turns out I didn't need it for the most part it was the body control module underneath it was just filthy wasn't giving it a signal we thought it was then a broken wire turns out it wasn't because when i locked the door with the key that was all done as well so we've well that's we did this video in two parts we've actually achieved quite a lot and i look forward to the next stage now thank you so much for watching being patient with my little uh, mess ups here but it's all part of owning one of these old Volkswagens. you've got to learn about it You've got to investigate into why something's not working. And with a budget car such as this, uh, getting your hands dirty will keep the price down. Now, we paid two grand for this. and We've spent minimal amount on it so far, servicing items, stuff like that. And we've now got a good serviceable vehicle, serviceable vehicle that I'm actually using daily anyway. I take my kids to school in it. I take the dog in it. You know, I use it. It's a good van. I've put a couple of thousand miles on it and it's working really, really well. Um, we've got a windscreen on it, cut to footage from Chris Ballmer's garage. I wanted to put the dash back together, so before I did that, we had the windscreen put in. Took it over to Mr B's uh, body shop over in Bexhill, we whipped the screen out, cleaned and rust prepared all of the frame, because that had got a bit rusty, which is why the screen was leaking. Popped that in, bang in, thank you very much Chris from Mr B's body shop. Uh, what else have we done? I'm trying to think, lots of stuff, but next week, we have got, or next video should I say, we have got a real surprise. Suspension and wheels. Now we've done a lot of work to go and get these suspension and wheels and I cannot wait. It's going to give this van an entirely different look and uh, it's going to prepare us for lots of adventures to come. So until next time, thank you so much. If you have liked this video, show me. Leave a little click on the thumbs up, the like. Really helps us out as a channel, helps get it out there to people or if you know other people that might want to see this sort of video, please be sure to share it. And if you haven't done so yet, please also subscribe. Um, it's a bit of an, initi an, an initiative now of ours pushing forward because you know there's lots of people that will benefit from these types of things. So thank you once again. I'm Lee. This is Coombelly Campers and we'll see you on the next episode of the 2KT5.